Welcome back Cubs, Direwolf here. And today, I want to talk about Facebook. In the last year, Facebook and Instagram instituted a new policy where if they think you are using fake information or a fake name, they will require you to verify your name by giving a government issued ID. If your account is flagged as having fake information such as a fake name like Direwolf, then you will be locked out of your account until you provide them a copy of a government ID. This policy was to stop people from impersonating other persons or from using personas like the one I use. Your real name and real information, a lot of people who may actually know you in real life, find your account. This is a benefit for anyone who has a personal account who wants to use it for networking, but it's no benefit to someone like me who uses a persona. However, it's far more of a benefit for Facebook who is selling your information as a commodity. Facebook makes all of its money from advertising, and you are far more valuable to an advertiser if they can verify you are a real person with accurate demographics that they can market to. And though I understand why they want to verify that people who use their website are real people, it is not worth the risk. I have never once registered anywhere online with my real information because it is not worth the the risk. It may be an economic benefit to Facebook and Instagram to get this information, but it is no benefit to me. And any slight benefit you might get from verifying your account is far outweighed by the risk of having your information released to someone with nefarious intent. Obviously, I have the additional worry of being doxxed, but even in addition to being doxxed, anyone who's not even using a persona like myself has the risk of identity theft and having the information stolen by criminals. No online company has a right to knowing any of our personal information. Not only do they not have a right to our information, they've also also been terrible stewards of our information in the past. Since 2005, there's been 39 data breaches of online companies that have released the personal information of millions and millions of consumers. These companies include Yahoo, four times, Weebly, Twitter, Steam, Mozilla, LinkedIn, eHarmony, Gmail, Facebook, eBay, and Dropbox, and many, many more. The thing is, Facebook has already accidentally released 60 million users' data to other users through a security flaw. Why should I trust them with my data now? Facebook has assured us they're going to keep our information secure, and they won't keep copies of our IDs. But why should I have to trust them? with information they don't need. Why should I have to trust that an employee of Facebook won't steal the information or the information won't be intercepted on the way to Facebook? And let's be clear, this information is not required for them to continue their current business model. They just want it so they can make more money off our information. This is not something they need, this is something they want. And it has nothing to do with harassment either. Cutting down on fake account names does not cut down on trolling or harassment. What does cut down on harassment is reporting people who actually harass, since many people who have fake names don't harass people online. Whatever Facebook tells you, asking you to verify your identity is not to improve your experience on Facebook and it's not to stop harassment. Verification is also not required for taking down accounts of people impersonating other real people. Prior to this policy change, there was already an effective way of petitioning to have an account removed that was impersonating you. I believe asking for ID verification for Facebook users is absurd and intrusive. It should be common sense with the rise of identity theft globally and the regular frequency of websites being hacked. You should never share your personal information online, least of all for a social networking site. And I think Facebook understands the security risk of having personal information online. I don't think they're stupid, uh, but I do think they're showing a disregard for the safety of the information of their users by asking for this information. I'm not saying they don't invest a lot of money into network security, but the point is, why put information on your network if it's not necessary? So obviously I don't like that Facebook's asking me for this information. So the question is, what do I do about it? Do I complain about it? Do I try contacting the company and tell them I don't want to give them the information? That won't achieve anything. If I don't like the service the company is giving, I just simply don't have to buy the service. I don't have to use the service, so I don't need to use Facebook. Especially when you consider that platforms like Facebook and Twitter recently have had a record of both censoring and silencing people, I really have no motive to keep using their platforms. If anyone else wants to use their platform, that's fine. I'm not saying that anyone should boycott them. I'm just saying that their services no longer fit my needs. And I'd rather spend my time and effort supporting a platform that supports my freedom of speech. So I'll be leaving Facebook, and unless Twitter changes, I'll probably be leaving Twitter in the future as well. But don't worry, Cubs, they're not the only two places you can follow me. You can also follow me on my DeviantArt.com account or my Minds.com account. Both of them are linked in the description. Just to be clear, I'm not endorsing either of these websites. They're not paying me to mention their companies, but I do use both those platforms. And I've never felt once that either of those platforms have ever tried to throttle my account ever tried to silence me or they ever had a political agenda. On the other hand, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube have done all of those things. 
As of now, the benefit of using YouTube outweighs the fact that they're trying to silence people. However, there's no benefit left for me in Facebook and very little benefit left in Twitter. And just like with everything in life, you do a cost-benefit analysis. What both Mark and Zach need to understand is, the more difficult they make it for their users to do what they want on their social networking platform, the more people are going to leave their social networking platform. The only reason why people use your platform is they get a benefit out of it. If you take that benefit away, what they are going to your platform for, then those people will go away and you will get less profits. Some people might leave your platform because they don't like the way you're social engineering the social and political discussions, but most people are going to leave your platform because of practicality, the practicality that you are not allowing them to do what they came to your platform to do. If they're going to your platform to be heard and to discuss topics and they want to get an audience and you take away that audience and you don't let them be heard, then they will go somewhere where they can be heard. It doesn't matter if you're the biggest company that provides a certain kind of service. If your service sucks, they will go to the company that provides the better service. Mark, Zach, your services suck because you're not considering the needs and the wants of the consumer. And as long as you do that, your companies will continue to decline and companies like mine's will continue to grow. Thank you for indulging me in my little Facebook rant, Cubs. I also want to thank the wonderful artist who produced my new avatar. She does do commissions, so if you want to contact her and see if she can do some art for you, the link is in the description for you to email her. Direwolf, out. <laughs>